I would like to discuss about my trip that I did back in 2017, where I cycled from the north of Finland down to the south of Finland. Within this story, I would like to discuss about the highlights of the trip. I want to discuss about what would be useful for other travelers who are going there, especially by bike, what the people are like, and also the landscape now I think about it. So to begin with, let's discuss about that story. So why did I actually end up in Finland? So originally I was planning a trip to go all around the Scandinavia Peninsula, and I have a whole bunch of other videos before, and this is part of the whole series that I'm creating. I was in Norway at the time. I just cycled around the Arctic fjords and all that, which was very, very beautiful. But then I ended up going through the north of Norway into the north of Finland. I continued to head down the main road, which is called the E8, and I eventually arrived at uh, Kielpisjave, which is in the north of Finland. And I stayed with a really nice couch surfer. There were a couple. One of them was from New Zealand. And the other was, I believe, she was looking off, she was surveying the land, I believe. And then I continued to head south. I was deciding through going through all of this Arctic tundra landscape, I decided to take the road, which was in Sweden instead, on the other side of the border, because it was a lot less traffic. The main road in Finland for me was quite busy. I didn't really enjoy the traffic on there is a lot of trucks, a lot of tourism, because people from Norway will come into Finland, buy their groceries and their gas from Finland and then drive back because it was slightly cheaper. So I took the 99, which was a road in Sweden developed, I think, by the military back when Russia was like in war with Sweden or something. I think it was either Sweden or Finland. While cycling down this incredibly beautiful road, because it was I, I remember one point I could sit on the road, lay down on it, and there wasn't a car for like a good 30 minutes to an hour. It was incredible. Very, very quiet, very beautiful, very sparsely populated. So you do need to watch on how much food and water you're carrying. Uh, you can literally, um, you can literally sit in the middle of the road. This is when the, the, the trees started to come back. So Sweden's filled with tons of forests, like endless amounts of forest. And Finland is as well. The north of Finland, though, is mostly like this Arctic tundra kind of looking place. And then you enter into the forest. I then arrived back at the Arctic Circle. And I was already there because I passed through it in Sweden at Jokmok. But I was coming back uh, to it because I was heading back south. And I stayed with a nice warm shower host. Warm showers is a bit like couch surfing where cyclists can be hosted for while they're traveling and you can meet other cyclists as they're traveling and stuff like this. These bike lanes to ride on though, like how are they to ride on the road? Are they okay? It's okay. Yeah? It's okay. There is no traffic going on. So, so we go on the ba uh, street after this ba bike line takes uh, ends there. The guy was really nice. He had a Velo Mobile, which is a recumbent bicycle. So I got to try a recumbent bicycle for the first time. And it was really nice. It's basically like a regular bike, but you get to cycle uh, a lot far, a little bit faster because it's more efficient and more aerodynamic. So it was really interesting trying to ride a bike like that. Uh, it was very stable as well. But when you're climbing up on steep hills, that's when you don't really want to ride a recumbent bike because they're a bit more heavier at the moment. I then left my host place and continued to head south. I then arrived back in Finland and I stayed with a couch surfer uh, not far from Orlu, which was the first time I ever had I stayed with a, a host where I really didn't get on well with them or he didn't get one well with me. There was a big miscommunication between the two of us, which was quite sad. And it was the only time I've ever had, like, like I've said, just downright miscommunication between the two of us. So I left early that morning, next morning, and I stayed with a host in Orlu. We got on well together and we chatted about different places that we both cycled and toured in because we went to similar places. That was really cool. 
and Orlu is a nice town, lots of bike paths. I really enjoyed uh, being there. It was like back in a big sort of city feeling because it's it's like the biggest city, I think, uh, in the north of Finland. If, I might be wrong on that, but I think it's pretty, it's a, it was a pretty big town. And I got to experience the, some of the coastline because I was going all along like the Gulf of Bothina, which is a really big sea. It actually freezes over in winter. And I got to, you, you kind of glimpse, you get to see glimpses of it as you ride along the coast road, but you don't, you don't see it that often, actually. And then I left Orlu and my host place and I continued and I tried to avoid taking the major highway, the E8, because there was a lot of traffic on that road, like I said. Um, and it's fun fact, when they have to repave those roads far north near the Arctic Circle and above, they actually have to repave like every major highway in summer when and in summer there's a three month gap to like pave everything it's fascinating how they can pave everything so fast and a lot of the roads when you take the country roads are basically gravel roads but they're really well compacted and very smooth to ride not very steep either because finland's pretty flat it's very similar to sweden i would say sweden's more hillier than finland I then arrived at my next host place, which was not far from Kokula. The host I stayed with, her family, in the family there was a brother, and he was a filmmaker as well, uh, and he had his own business at the time. I wasn't even set up for that sort of thing at the time, so it was really interesting talking to him about the, the things that he did over in Florida with filming-wise and flying in planes and stuff. And then I left that host place and I arrived at another one just south near Kokula. She was giving me a lot of, she was a nice host. She gave me a lot of insight onto roads I could take. She also did a bunch of touring in Finland as well and had another person I could stay with who she knew in Varsa. And Varsa is a city south of Kokula. So I headed towards Varsa and I took a lot of the coastal road and the islands and there's, there's tons of islands in Finland, just thousands and thousands of lakes and islands and tons of trees it's it's very filled it's just filled to the brim with nature it's really beautiful and a lot of the coastline in finland is actually rising out of the sea so varsa um used to be literally where the coastline started now there's a bunch of islands in front of, uh, or ahead of it uh rising out of the ocean uh, out of the sea I wouldn't be surprised within the next hundred years that Sweden and Finland will be much closer together and the Gulf of Bothina will be smaller. This big sea will be much smaller, the Baltic Sea. So I left my host place again and I tried to avoid the major highway again because I didn't obviously enjoy the traffic. I really loved the country roads. They were beautiful, as I said, sometimes paved, sometimes not, but still really, really lovely. And eventually I stayed with another host not far from Pori and I tried to follow, um, I tried to always follow the coast as much as I could. It's quite hard to do though, because like I said, you only get glimpses of the coast. Um, but there's tons of nature there, so it kind of makes up for it, especially with all of the lakes that you get to see along the way. And then I left Pori and I headed towards the beginning of the Orland Islands, which is just north of the city of Torku. It's basically like the road just ends, as you can see. And then the boat's heading that way, so we have to wait for it to come back. Handy, be handy to have a kayak right now. And I, I didn't go towards Helsinki. I went, like I said, towards Orland. So I, I went this that way to go back towards Sweden. And Orland was really amazing, but I will talk about that in my next video to continue the series to head on back towards Norway. But what I want to refresh her on, or what I want to discuss now, is about the people. Because the people in Finland aren't as you would expect. Like, the culture there has been developed over, like, I would say almost a thousand years, very in its own way. And Finland and Sweden are, are not really the same culturally. Like there's, there's similarities, especially when you take along the coastal road. A lot of people are, are actually Swedish. And some of, them, some of the Finnish even speaks Swedish, which is really interesting. 
even though the flags are this sort of looking the same and the landscape and where it's placed in in the in the Scandinavia like area it doesn't mean that they're the same so when you when you have a conversation with a Finnish person i noticed that being an englishman it's it's it wasn't so easy cuz not a lot of people speak english and I feel like a lot of the literal literal translation when translating from Finnish to English sometimes is miscommunicated. That's why I think I had a this couch surfer had I had a slight miscommunication with him. Nevertheless, they were very friendly, very helpful. Like a majority of them were extremely helpful and gave a lot of uh wisdom to what to see in the area and you know that sort of thing. In Sweden most people speak English as a second language like immediately and Finland it's just getting started so that's what I noticed personally if you know some Finnish that I think would help you a lot over in Finland and if you've grew up there or for your like vacations or something that will also make a difference or if you have Finnish friends as well it's just something to keep in mind and that's pretty much it regarding uh, what what my story was going through there If you'd like to have a look at the map of the route that I took, I will leave a link in the description or um I will leave a link to find this whole map. It's on like my Google Map maps and you can look at the whole route in detail. But now that I look at this tour, it's been about 3 years since I did this tour and I'm thinking to myself like there were so many instances where I could have taken a different route. Like I was even debating to stay in Sweden and not go not go through Finland. I and I can't recall exactly why I was doing that. And I suppose what I find fascinating about that is how whatever road you take can completely change your journey. And it's not a good or a bad thing. It just means that you'll be having a different experience. And I find that that specifically fascinating that you can change your experience just via going left or right i found i find that really fascinating and like one of the reasons i went through scandinavia in general was to experience the nature i wanted to go up to the arctic circle i was very inspired seeing a lot of videos going up there of people going above the arctic circle and seeing the midnight sun i have that all in my Norwe- norwegian tour you can have a look at the fjords and see this midnight sun and learn about that and being above the arctic circle it's it's so bleak it's just so surreal some of the landscape it's just so quite a, a lot of it is barren and sort of looking like arctic tundra and the in the forests are breathtaking because they just go on for miles and miles and miles like in in europe i was surprised to find up in scandinavia that there's a lot of wild nature still left up there and you can see reindeer just roaming across the land and it's it's incredible it's really breathtaking to see the nature up there that's one of the reasons i went up through a lot of scandinavia so i hope you enjoyed a lot of the insight into maybe doing a tour yourself in finland if you have any questions you can ask them down below and i'll try and re- re- i try and reply to all the comments that i get and in the next video we're going to continue going into the orland islands or towards Orland is still the islands are still part of Finland even though it's quite Swedish so we're going to talk about that and going back towards Norway through Sweden and heading that direction and meeting up with my friend who joined me throughout touring and we're going to be talking even more about that so i hope you enjoyed and remember whatever path you take it doesn't matter if it's the right or the wrong one because they're all the right path